Dave, is that the free week that you've had now potentially come at a good time, an opportunity to maybe reflect a little bit after the difficult run that you've had? Um, yeah, you, you reflect after every game, I suppose, what it does do. It gives you a chance to, to work on things that will benefit us medium term, long term, and then ultimately things that hopefully get you back on track in terms of the short term for, for, for this weekend. Um, I don't think it's been a, a case of having to uh, having to, to reset. There's, the margins are, are fine. Um, so we've worked on stuff that hopefully will help us win the game um, on Saturday at Colchester. What is the, the mood around the camp at the minute? Because there must have been positives that you can take when you analyse and look back at the game from Saturday. You've, you've certainly created enough chances to win that game on another day. So what is the mood around the players? The moods, I don't want this to sound the wrong way, no different than when, or very little difference than when we won 12 games on the bounce. Um, I think we're good at being consistent around our behaviours, we're good at being consistent around our um, actions and how we deal with, with, with wins and, and losses. Um, we shut down the, the games, the first occasion or first opportunity you have when, when we're back in. We look at the things we did well, the things we can do better, the stuff that backs up and reinforces our values as a, as a group. Um, and then very, very quickly move on to, to the next game, what that looks like, what we will have to do in that game in order to win. Um, and what things that potentially are going to give us the best chance of doing that. And that's exactly what we've, what we've done. Are there parallels, do you feel, between where you are right now and maybe the run that you had at the start of the season in terms of the, the specific issues that you're facing? There are in the fact that football matches are played on a big pitch, but football matches are decided in, in both penalty areas in most instances. Um, and you look back to the start of the season, we were making mistakes that were getting punished um, and we weren't taking, taking our chances. Um, and... We've done a combination of that over over the last the last few weeks. We conceded poor goals from our perspective, something that we've been brilliant at. And um, I suppose the, the past two games have shown I've got back to that, and we've got clean sheets as a, as a result of it. And we've not taken our taken our chances, and that's ultimately hindered our chances of, of winning, um, which is which is which has been the case. Um, what we have done is still created those chances, and we've got to trust in. The, the process and the quality that we have, that if we continue to make them chances, then, then we will take them um, and we will start winning again. You must be able to draw on those experiences in terms of how you came through the other side of that run at the start of the season, obviously went on that great 12-game winning run, in terms of knowing that things can flip very quickly in this league. The margins are, actually, the margins are tiny. Um, and I don't think that us... Not taking chances uh, last weekend is as a result of lack of lack of confidence. It's just uh, a case of technique letting us down at a key moment and goalkeepers making saves, which is what they're what they're paid to do. Um, it, it showed last year uh, this division and, and the margins and how tight they are. When you look at go back to we could have got promoted on the last game of the season last year. Um, Northampton deservedly did went to, went to Tranmere and won. Um, but over the course of the season, the games could flip. I think we we'll have to look. We have to review and look back at things. And Northampton hit the post and crossbar three times last year, and, and we hit the post and crossbar nineteen times. Two or three of them go an inch to the left or an inch to the right, and the result is potentially different. And hindsight then says, "Oh, look at that! You could have got automatic promotion." That's not the case. But you have to use what's there um, as a as a guide to almost bring you back to reality a little bit. If we've gone through the last few games and we've created nothing and we've not been ourselves, then you may be concerned. But if you look at where we were, certainly on uh, certainly on Saturday, data-wise, stats-wise, we had the highest expected goals in, in League Two. Um, the computer says that we should have scored the most goals based on the simplicity areas of our chances we didn't there were teams that didn't have that um expected goals and scored five goals that's that's football you you have to be really efficient you have to take your chances you have to take, take chances that aren't chances if you do that you give yourself a really good chance of winning games consistently 
and end up in the position that we currently sit. We've done that over the course of the season, so um, there's certainly not panic stations from our perspective. It's certainly not a, a reset moment by any stretch. We want to go to Colchester and win. We've got of our next four games. We've got three away, uh, three tough away games. They all hold the same prize at the end of it, three points. They all hold the prize that we want to go and get, so that's what we'll try and do. Moving on to injuries, are there any new ones to report of? Has everyone come through this week unscathed so far? No, um, surprisingly and um, very thankfully a, a clear week. Um, everybody came through the, the game unscathed, um, so we'll be the same as, as what we were in terms of squad for, for last weekend. Um, I suppose unfortunately on the back of that, no one... Certainly not this week that we'll be coming back into the fold. Um, but I've said it previously, and maybe I should stop saying it, we, we should hopefully start getting players back next weekend, potentially, um, and certainly weekends following following on from that, with the hope of not losing any. Um, it would be great to have um, all of our squad available. It, um, it's not a great uh, viewing when every... Day or every time I go in my office, there's a list of nine players that are injured that I know would have or make a significant difference to, to our squad in terms of what it in what it looked like. Um, but that's the case, and that's where we sit at the moment. So we have to um, we have to dig in. We have to overcome that. And one person's misfortune, I say, is another person's opportunity. Um, and we we have to maximise the opportunities. You mentioned in, in your interview last week the possibility of a, a beating game this week. Were you able to? Use that to give minutes to some players that needed it. Yeah, um, some players got minutes. It would have been an opportunity for potentially for Ethan Pye, um, but Ethan obviously got minutes on on Saturday. Uh, but certainly for the likes of uh, Benno and, and Rico, and we'd hope to have a have a look at Jid in the game, but he was he was he was ill. Cody, um, they got got minutes and got some some competitive minutes. It, it, there will be opportunities for them. Like I say, at the moment, our our squads. It's not thin, but it, it, it's everybody involved. So within that, there are potential opportunities out there or in the not too distant future. We've got to make sure that everybody is as close to up to speed as possible in order to, order to go and not just maximise the opportunities for themselves, but give us the best chance as a, as a team of of winning and keeping us in the position that we, we currently sit. Um, so every opportunity we get to do that, we'll, we'll try and do it. Um, there's obviously a, a risk involved, but minimal risk, and we think the risk um, is worth taking with the hopefully the reward that's at the end of it. Obviously, as a consequence of not having Crosby and, and Campsy last week, we saw Nick Powell playing a, a deeper role than what we've seen uh, from him previously. I'm sure in an ideal world, you have Powley as close to the goal as possible, but how do you feel he did in, in that new role? Yeah, it's, it's not natural for Nick, but I think you, what you look at in terms of what that role requires you to be um, and what the ideal scenario for us would be in terms of what type of player we need in there. Somebody that can receive the ball, will receive the ball and take the ball with players around them, has got um, the ability to beat players, the ability to see passes, to make passes, is aerially good enough, can get round the pitch. He, he ticks all of, all of those boxes. Um, the one thing that that position requires that Nick probably doesn't have or has to work harder at is the discipline to stay um, in the middle of the pitch because he is a he is a Roma even when you the, he plays as a, a centre forward you probably hair pullingly see him in the left back slot that's why he plays that's how he plays the game so we've just got to be aware that what what we're not saying to him is he's, we want you to play in that position and we don't want you to move anywhere he, he plays free, um, so he has to work hard and, and be a little bit more disciplined. But if there's an opportunity, he sees that opportunity, then go and try and benefit and maximise that opportunity. Others then need to be aware of that. So speaking to likes of Sars and people like that who are in there with him, just have an understanding that that might happen. We're speaking to the, the, the back players to make sure that they're organised when we're in possession of the ball. We, we, we call it rest defence. It's, it's about communicating, organising and recognising situations. Um, I think we have, we have players, Sars being one, Odin being one, that can play in that position in them positions uh, because they're very good footballers the, the the game intelligence is is fantastic um 
Is it natural for them? Is it their strength? No, absolutely not. But can they do it? Yeah, of course they can do it. And at the moment, with where we are with the squad and that being a position that we don't have, I suppose, a natural one, then we need to do what's best for the team. They understand that and are willing to, to, to play their part. Just finally on Col- Colchester, who uh, have certainly been much harder to beat since Danny's gone in there. I know a lot of draws so far, but just one defeat in eight. You went to see them on Tuesday night at Salford. What did you make of them? Yeah, it was a it was a bit of a grind of a game on a on a difficult pitch, um, but they're like you say they, they've brought players in, they've changed a little bit. They were, I suppose, free in terms of their system over the course of the game. They played three different systems or, or four different systems, trying to trying to chase the game and trying to get themselves back into it. Um, we know where where their strengths are. It's a tough place to go. It's a long way to go, um, but. For us, it's about it's about winning. We play we face three away games of the of the next four, um, and the same prize is on offer for all of them. And and our sole aim is to making sure that we get things right in order to go to, to Colchester and get three points, um, and then back that up with our with our next performance. That's what we've got to do between now and the end of the season. That's what we're doing our best to uh, to make happen. Appreciate your time again, Dave. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. Thank you.